What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Today we're checking out a very monumental release for Fedora, Fedora 22. Now Fedora is the move fast and break things version of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, so it tests a lot of the stuff that Red Hat want to do in their Red Hat Enterprise Linux version later on. Now Fedora 22 has been out for a little bit and I've been meaning to get a hold of it and test it out. Finally I have and this is the result. Let's just dive straight into this review talking a little bit about the installer. Now the installer has constantly been undergoing a bit of work over the last couple of releases but it's still a little bit counterintuitive in my opinion. That's really all I'll say about it. I wish it was a little bit more intuitive and easy to use, but it's just not quite there yet. I suppose it's worth mentioning that Fedora as a distribution, I feel, is designed to cater to the needs of Linux enthusiasts and Linux developers, because really when it when you have a look at their new set of releases in terms of what you can download as Fedora, you've got Fedora Cloud, Fedora Server, and Fedora Workstation. Fedora Cloud is a very minimalist image that just has the basics to get you up and running if you want to deploy Fedora on a cloud-based system. Uh, Fedora server is if you obviously need the infrastructure for a server and Fedora workstation is the everyday desktop that you and I would probably download. That's the one that I was testing and downloading in this review. So that's the one I'm going to be referring to. It defaults with the GNOME desktop and the latest version being 3.16. And it provides a very polished and open source desktop environment and a lot of other unofficial spins, such as KDE gaming, security, scientific KDE. There's a bunch of them out there. Just Google Fedora spins and you'll find a whole bunch. So what has actually changed and what are some of the big numbers that are new with Fedora 22? Well, first of all, you've got, like I said, the GNOME stack 3.16. That is the default desktop that comes on Fedora Workstation. That's why I'm talking about it. There's the Linux kernel 4.0, which is a pretty monumental mental release in and of itself. There's a few new tools in there that are new defaults for Fedora 22, especially for developers with the GCC compiler that is hitting version five by default and Python three shipping by default as well. System D is the new system scheduler, kind of similar to Ubuntu. And also we now have Wayland support by default in GDM, the login manager, as the first thing that you see when the system boots up graphically, uh, that will be uh, Wayland by default. And most likely probably the most significant update to the Fedora as an operating system is the introduction of DNF instead of YUM as the package manager. Now YUM has basically been superseded by DNF, which I like to think of as did not finish, which which is the code name for pretty much all of Fedora. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually called Dandified Yum. That's what it's supposed to stand for. Um, and in my experience, um, DNF is a lot faster than Yum is, um, at least in my testing. Uh, in terms of finding repos, solving dependencies, and also dealing with issues, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of differences and improvements that DNF makes on typical Yum. At the core, it is still Yum. So if you like Yum as a package manager, it works the exact same way. There's just a few tweaks about how it uh, how it handles different problems I guess. Overall on the desktop side of things GNOME 3.16 was a little bit sluggish in my opinion. Um, it's kind of weird nowadays we're in this world where KDE is actually quicker and feels quicker than what GNOME does because it used to be the other way around not too long ago but it is what it is. So the user experience could do with a little bit of polishing up and it'd be great to see GNOME get a little bit lighter as it is getting pretty heavy on the resources now. Some of the most notable changes you're gonna find is the new notification center that drops down from the top along with the calendar. And also you've got some sweet new notifications when they do come in, they come from the top, middle, and, uh, and it'll display them there. Any legacy notification icons, which used to be on the top right of your Linux desktop will now be in the bottom left uh, and they'll auto hide. So things like Skype or VLC, those little icons will live down in that bottom corner. Overall though, I love the look of GNOME 3.16 or GNOME 3.16, whatever it is. Um, and look, the polish and the minimalism of GNOME is pretty inspiring. It's a very simple desktop. Uh, the look and feel isn't quite there. I'd tweak it a bit if I was going to be using this myself, which I could end up doing. Um, but for the moment, yeah, it's, it's nice. Uh, it's functional. It's very pretty. It's minimalistic. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, a little bit sluggish in my opinion. And that just about does it for this Fedora 22 review. Overall, it's a really good step and it has a lot of incremental improvements that I think um, will benefit the Linux community at large. Um, and to be honest, I think it's probably one of the most um, 
pushing the envelope releases that we've seen from the major Linux desktop distributions in the last couple of years, really. Uh, so what do you think about Fedora 22? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and one other thing that is really useful to mention here, if you are thinking about running Fedora 22 as your go-to distribution, check out Post Installer F. It's a handy little tool that helps you install all of those little things that you love about the desktop that you're currently running, and it will install them um, a lot more streamlined than what it would be for you to do it manually. So post installer F, or there's another one called Fetty, and that one will do a similar thing as well. That'll be all from me guys in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, you can find me on Twitter and other places as well. Fun fact, the most popular video on this channel in terms of how many views is actually a Fedora 15 review. So that kind of tells me that there are people out there that like Fedora and want to know what's up to date with Fedora. So there you go, Fedora 22 review. I will see you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. environment that you guys wanted to look at. So having said that, the GNOME desktop environment and GNOME 3.10 especially has, has undergone...